Hello, welcome to my Friday cycling vlog. It is an absolutely perfect day here. I'm out on the north coast of California. So welcome all you visitors who are here on my channel. Thank you very much. Thank you to all the folks who have subscribed that are watching. Hello. Thank you for all the nice comments. It's been really fun. Check, check out the views. Views for days. So what about an update on, on my, my new old bike that I'm building, the uh, Colnago. So right now I've got most of the parts to assemble that bike. The only thing I don't have currently is uh, I don't have a fork and a headset. The headset that's on there is a one inch threadless and I'm planning to go back to a uh, threaded with a quill style stem. I'm just a big fan of the quill stem. A lot of it has to do with the aesthetics, but also I just like the functionality. Quill stems are also very affordable and they are just super, super nice. The headsets are pretty good. I would say maybe the a threadless headset might have some advantages, but but overall, I think that the threaded headsets are good and I plan to use that on the bike. So for the fork, uh, you know, since the fork, the original fork got lost or, you know, cut or whatever, it's gone. This bike cannot be a, there's no point in trying to make it a purist. And, and to be honest, I don't really want a purist bike. I want something that I get on and I enjoy riding it. I'm just gonna have the parts that I wanna use. And so for the fork, I've got something really special planned for it. It's gonna be really, really nice. Uh, so, so, but that's what I'm waiting on. So stay tuned for that video. That'll follow Miss Cool's bike video, probably down the line, because I don't know when the fork will be available to me. So stay tuned on the fork and the Colnago build. Uh, that's coming. All right, we're just coming into the final miles here of this ride. Sun is setting. Back here in the trees. Okay, back now. The ride was uh, 50 miles, 5,700 feet of climbing, and uh, four hours and three minutes moving time. Elapsed time was probably uh, a lot longer because I stopped at the coffee shop. And uh, anyway, so just to kind of wrap up this, uh, this video, this was kind of a low, obviously a low production video. But before I go, I just wanted to do one last little uh, update on the shifter setup here. Uh, let me let me bring the camera around and show you. So as a lot of you know, I uh, switched out the, uh, I used a uh, Campy 10-speed Veloce front uh, shifter here, or rear shifter, front shifter, and I coupled it to Shimano GRX 11-speed drivetrain, but then I put this 10-speed Shimano cassette. And I did a whole video series about it. And I'm now on, I think this was ride five or six uh, today. And I've really been trying to push this thing through the paces to see if it's going to have any problems, any hangups or anything. And so far it's working out really, really well. So uh, if you didn't see the series, the reason I went with a 10 speed cassette and an 11 speed GRX derailleur uh, was because the Campy 10-speed Veloce shifters have, uh, per the internet, an average cable pull ratio or an average cable pull of 2.8 millimeters per shift, per click. 
So if you take 2.8 millimeters and you look at the, the pull ratio of the rear derailleur, that is how much the derailleur will move per millimeter, you will find out that the 11 speed road shifters, now I know this is a GRX, this is a gravel derailleur, but this has the road pull ratio. So this is the same pull ratio as a Altegra, a Dura Ace, a 105, a Tiagra, I believe. They're all the same. When you go to the mountain bike side, the ratio changes. I believe it's a 1.0 or a 1.1 ratio, and this is like a 1.4, I believe. Whatever it is, it's the 11 speed ratio for road. So if you take the 2.8 campy pull, 2.8 millimeters, with the 1.4 ratio, out pops this magical number that matches the Shimano 10 speed cassette cog spacing or cog pitch as it's often referred to. And cog pitch is the distance between each cog, the center line distance. Now the problem we found out in that series was that the 2.8 campy pull ratio as reported on the internet is an average pull ratio. That means if you take all of the pull, add it all up and divide by nine for, ten, for a 10 speed group, you get 2.8. Now, if you did that with an 11 speed, if you add up all of the, the distance that the 11 speed will pull, the total distance and divide by 10, out pops a different number. I think it's 2.6 for campy 11 speed. Now that is the average pull. However, Campy doesn't have a linear pull. It's not, each click pulls a slightly different amount of cable. And you might be wondering, well, why would Campy have a different pull for each click? How, how come it's 2.5, 2.5, 2.6, 2.7, 2.8, 3.0, 3.1? Why are the numbers not constant? And that is because if you look at a rear derailleur, it is a parallelogram and it has a lever here. When the cable pulls on this lever, it moves this parallelogram. And as that lever arm gets pulled closer and closer to the point of where the cable is, the distance that it can move, it's, it's moving through an arc. It's moving through an arc. And so what happens is as that arc changes, the hypotenuse, if you will, of a, tr of a right triangle, if you were to draw a right triangle around that uh, pull lever, you will see that the hypotenuse keeps changing as the derailleur articulates through the different gears. So it's a geometric issue, and it depends on the design of the derailleur uh, lever that pulls the parallelogram. Campy obviously has a non-linear uh, lever arm, and so to compensate, they used a non-linear cable pull. So what I did in the video was I figured out that if you go inside the shifter itself, inside here, Campy is beautiful. You can take it apart. You can access the hole inside, unlike other brands. You can go in and modify the cable pulley wheel to adjust the cable pull for your specific application. But it may not work for every Campy shifter. Some campy shifters use a steel cable pulley. This particular one uses a composite plastic of some kind. It's a very hard plastic, but it can be filed. So I did a video on that part three of this series and uh, you can check it out. I did the math, I did the filing, I did the discussion and it's all in there. So if this is something you're interested in doing, I would highly recommend checking out that video. So anyway, that's it. Uh, that's what I did. The shifting is working out fine. It's shifting better than most of the other index shifted bikes that I have. It's better than my Altegra. Somebody mentioned to check the derailleur hanger to see if it's bent. So I will be doing that. But um, overall, I mean, even if it wasn't bent, uh, the, the way the levers feel, this is superior. And this is not a high-end version of Campy. This is not the Ultra Shift. This is the uh, QS, I think is what it's called. 
So you only get one shift down, um, three or four, sh three shifts up, I think, one shift down. Whereas the ultra shift you can do, I think, three or four down and three or four up. Um, so it's a little bit better for some reason. Ooh. Almost dropped the camera there. So anyway, that's all for now. I uh, hope you enjoyed this um, low production value, quick video that I wanted to make. Updating everyone where we're at here at the Henry Wildberry Studios. So have a nice uh, Black Friday. Don't spend any money today. Wait until later. And if you do spend money, spend it on your local bike uh, builder, supplier, local bike shop, whatever it is. Keep it local. And uh, see you soon.